Hi, I'm Mummy Deer. Welcome to my channel. By the title of this video, you know that we will be talking about sleep training today. Specifically, I will be sharing my experience of how I trained my then five month old daughter to sleep through the night with the cry it out method in one week. In the first part of this video, I will be sharing general sleep training tips, which are good to know regardless of the sleep training method that you choose. The second part of this video may not be for everyone, but specifically for those who want to learn more about the cry it out method. Stick around. General sleep training tip number one. When is a good time to start sleep training? Most sources say four to six months. This is because most babies by this time would have developed physically such that they don't need a feeding during nighttime. I wouldn't recommend starting too much later than this period because older habits are harder to break. Now, if your child is already past this age, don't worry. Although it is harder, it is definitely not impossible to still sleep train them. So keep watching. Tip number two, your baby needs to be weaned of any nighttime feeding or dream feeds and feeding your baby to sleep also needs to stop because you don't want your baby to rely on you to fall asleep. Tip number three, Make sure your baby has good or sufficient naps before you start sleep training. You want your baby to not have slept so much during the day that they're not tired by nighttime and also not so tired from lack of naps that they would be overtired and too fussy to fall asleep. To know how long your baby's naps need to be, I've included a fantastic resource in the description box below from babyscience.com. I found a chart on their website that states clearly what hours of sleep is to be expected for naps and nighttime for babies at different stages. So make sure to check that out. Tip number four, get caregivers to be on the same page and with the plan. So you guys want to choose a method that works for you and stick to it for at least a week. Agree on what you would do when different scenarios play out, but the important thing is not to be reactive to the situation because you will be tempted to give up when you don't have a plan. Lastly, be prepared for an emotional roller coaster ride, but have the end goal in mind and that is to train your little one to have the essential skill of falling asleep on her own and soothing herself back to sleep should she wake up during the night. Tip number five, establish a bedtime routine. For example, wind down with a bath, do a final feeding, say goodnight before putting her down in the crib. The key is to be consistent so that your baby is cued that it is bedtime every time this routine starts to play. Tip number six, Watch for steady progress as a sign of the effectiveness of the method you choose and to gauge if you should continue or not. Tip number seven, things you might want to have at hand before you start sleep training include a baby monitor with visual and audio, blackout curtains to create an ideal sleeping environment for your baby, a time telling device, and a notebook at hand to record everything down. Those were my general sleep training tips. For the remainder of this video, please continue watching at your own discretion. Let me share my sleep training journey with you. To give you a bit of background, my daughter was a preemie. She was a very light sleeper to begin with. To put her to sleep, we always had to do continuous pacing and rocking and if we ever put her down, she could sleep for 30 to 45 minutes at most before she would wake and cry. So to have her sleep through the night, me and my husband took turns co-sleeping with her. The lack of regular sleep and the inability of her to fall asleep and stay asleep on her own was certainly taking a toll on us. In the early months, as with all parents, we did what we needed to do because she was growing physically and catching up as a preemie. At five months, I tried the Ferber method. It's a method that works for many others and that's great. But personally, it was very 
emotionally and physically taxing for me to have her be soothed with my presence only to burst into tears again when I leave the room. Each time her disappointment would be greater than the time before. I quickly knew this was not the method for us. We were getting desperate. One fateful day after hearing a couple share their success story of training their one-year-old with the cried out method, my husband and I decided to give it a go. For those who are opposed to the cried out method or sleep training in general, I would encourage you to look at the most recent research and know that there is no research evidence to show long-term harm on babies who go through the cried out method or the firmer method of sleep training. I can't put it better than how a parent wrote on her blog regarding choosing the cried out method. As parents, we must weigh short-term costs against long-term harms because our children cannot. We have to consider the risk of a few nights of stress and unmet needs against the risk of a car accident or job loss and against the serious physical and emotional toll of chronic sleep deprivation on the entire family. You being a well-rested, healthy and happy parent is good for you and good for your child. The cried out method is a sleep training technique that involves putting your baby to bed and letting her cry and fuss until she falls asleep on her own. This means you won't go back into the room to comfort her once you've put her down. The point of the cried out method is to help your baby learn to fall asleep on her own without your help. And that includes when they wake up during the night. Here are the specific tips and steps for carrying out the cried out method. Place your baby in the crib while she is drowsy but still awake. Leave the room and don't wait for her to fall asleep. Then, don't respond. I know this is the hardest part and I think this is also where you can tailor this method to suit what you're comfortable with. To be effective and really giving this method a try, I would recommend setting a limit of at least 30 minutes to an hour to let the baby have a chance to fall asleep on her own. For you to gauge if the cried out method is working for you or not, here's the general expectation of how things should play out over a week. Baby should cry increasingly less over the first three nights and crying should stop somewhere between the fourth and seventh night. Eventually, babies just fuss for a few minutes before falling asleep or just quietly falls asleep. Now I will share how my baby was sleep trained in a week. I'm glad I took really careful notes. On day one, October 23rd, 2018, we placed her down at 8.30. She cried it out for 35 minutes before she fell asleep. And she slept for five hours continuously before she woke at 2.05 a.m. I changed her diaper, placed her back down, she cried it out for 11 minutes before falling back asleep. She slept a total of nine and a half hours that day. Day two, we placed her down at nine. She cried it out for 16 minutes. She slept for seven hours, 15 minutes before she woke at 4.30 a.m. I changed her diaper. She cried it out for seven minutes and fell back asleep. She slept for a total of eight hours and 15 minutes the second day. On the third day, we placed her down at 8.44. She cried it out for 16 minutes. She slept for six and a half hours before waking at 3.30 a.m. I changed her diaper, put her back in her crib, and this time there was no crying involved. She slept for 10 and a half hours. Note, there is both a progress in the amount of time needed for her to fall asleep on her own and the length of time she could stay asleep. This was my cue to continue to persist with this method. On day four, we placed her down at nine. She cried it out for only four minutes. She slept for seven hours continuously before waking up at 4.03 a.m. I changed her diaper. Only some light crying was involved when I placed her back in the crib, but she fell back asleep in one minute. She slept for nine hours and 45 minutes total the fourth day. 
On day five, we placed her down at 9.08. She cried it out for three minutes. She slept for seven hours continuously before waking at 4.06 a.m. I changed her diaper. Again, no crying when I placed her back in the crib. She slept for nine hours total. Day six, we placed her down at 8.59. She cried it out for four minutes and she slept for eight hours continuously before waking at 5 a.m. I changed her diaper, put her back down. She cried for 18 minutes this time before falling back asleep. She slept a total of nine and a half hours. Note, there will likely be some regressions throughout the week. Don't be faced by them. Persist and don't throw away the progress you've achieved. Day seven, we placed her down at 8.52. She cried it out for three minutes. She slept for seven hours and 45 minutes total before waking at 4.40 a.m. I changed her diaper. She cried it out for seven minutes before falling back to sleep and she slept for a total of nine and a half hours that day. On day eight, we placed her down at 8.43. There was no crying. She slept for 10 hours, 15 minutes continuously before she woke at 7 a.m. Success. <laughs> the success in sleep training my daughter literally changed my experience as a mother. Although I was infinitely grateful for having her, the ride was not a smooth one up until that point. As soon as she was sleep trained, the whole family enjoyed good continuous sleep from there on, and it was a game changer. I even regained some evening time to myself where I could rejuvenate and be there for her 100% in the morning. I'm so grateful I was told it was okay to try the cry it out method. As far as I see from the information I gathered, the cry it out method is a legit sleep training method that can effectively sleep train many babies in a relatively short amount of time. It has indeed worked for us and many others I know personally. I wanna give you the same encouragement today and that is no matter what method you choose to sleep train your baby with, you and your baby will find a way that works as long as you persist. If you like mummy advice videos like this, please support by hitting the like button, consider subscribing, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss the next video. Until then, I wish you all the best in sleep training your little one. Bye. I want to live for Jesus and be his special friend. Please come into my heart today. In Jesus' name, amen.